Este disco compacto solo puede ser utilizado en una consola Dreamcast. And is for use only on a Dreamcast unit. Playing this disc on a hi-fi or other audio equipment can cause serious damage to its speakers. Dreamcast, up to six billion players. Why don't we play together? Hey, 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 it's time to make some crazy money. Are you ready? Here we go! Please stop this disc now, 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 now. Friends, now, now. Romans, countrymen, lend me your VMUs because mine's run out of batteries. You are listening to episode 20 of the Dreamcast Junkyard Dream Pod. My name is Tom. And I'm joined by an, a superlative team of Dreamcast experts from around the globe. This is a truly, truly international episode. It usually is anyway. But uh, today I'm joined by Rob. Hi. Joined by Aaron the Gagaman Foster. Hello. <laughs> joined by Caleb. Hello. And we have a very special guest joining us all the way from España. <laughs> That's Spain to those who don't speak Spanish. <laughs> His name is Carlos Oliveros, and he is one of the main programmers from independent developer Retro... Is it Retro Sumus or Retro Sumus? Sumus. Retro Sumus. Hello, Carlos. Welcome. <laughs> thank you for joining us. Hello. Thank you for having me. We had a few minor technical issues, but we've overcome them, and we've uh, we've, we've endeavoured to uh, continue and uh, create yet another incredible episode of the world premier dreamcast podcast even if i say so myself guys what we want to do is the usual uh, we've been away for a while as people who listen may have realized uh, but we're back with a bang hopefully we'll kick things off as usual and we'll just uh, have a little bit of a chat about things that we may have picked up or played uh, and then we will come back to carlos and talk about all things retro summers and uh, independent development so rob I'm going to come to you first. Uh, what have you? <laughs> no, no, no pressure. No pressure. Rob, what have you been doing? Have you been playing on the Dreamcast? Have you bought anything? <laughs> I'm still in the desert, Tom. I'm really sorry. Oh, good, good God, Rob. <laughs> More good time God. has passed. I still have not picked up anything on Dreamcast. I don't know what it is. I, I think it's the fact that I've got to this stage where I own pretty much all the, the games that I really, really want that I can afford. And mm. now to expand my collection, I'd either be buying like games that are down the tier in terms of desirability or are mm. through the roof in terms of price. I think you get to that stage with most consoles. I know I have with a fair few where you sort of get to this natural limit that your finances or your sort of your your interest in, in games can take you. And I've sort of got there with the Dreamcast. I need to try harder to find some uh, more bargain. Need to get into them there uh, anime dating sims. That's what it is. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I need to dive into those. You'll be there all year. <laughs> And then some. So I will try and get back onto the Dreamcast, but there's still nothing. In terms of Saturn, though, my Saturn adventure still continues. I managed to pick up a high Saturn. Oh, wow. Oh, nice. I was really, really pleased about that. It's in really good condition. It's got all the all the original stuff with it. And uh, I've literally just got it hooked up earlier today, and I've been playing a bit of Race Gaiden on it. And, yeah, it's great. Can I be cheeky and ask you how much you paid for it? That was 120 That's pretty good. Yeah. Not bad. It, Congratulations for that. Thank you. It was... Um, I, if you don't mind me interrupting. <laughs> no, no, not at all. I felt it was a good price. Now, do you have the accoutrements for Saturn, for example? Do you oh, have... good word. Good word. Do you have the... Uh... <laughs> wow. <laughs> Tom, please. Uh, did you get the like the memory card that allows you to do the four yeah. or two uh, megabyte thing? Did you, get, did you get that? I already had that. The, the action replay four meg auto... Um, I already had that, so I've slotted that in. So I think it's pretty much the best. Well, apart from the Navi, because they did the Navi High Saturn as well, didn't they? The one that you could stick in your car. Yeah. I'd love that one, but I know that one's stupid money, so I don't think that'll ever happen. So in terms of my my, my Saturn setup, I think this is the best it's going to get. So I've got the High Saturn with the with the four meg auto stuck in the back, and uh, yeah, it's it's great. Awesome, Carlos. As you're a guest, I'm going to come to you next. Uh, have you picked up anything recently on your uh, travels for the Dreamcast or otherwise? Well, as I think I. Uh... I told you in a previous email, I sent my very, uh, my dear <laughs> Japanese Dreamcast to a friend who is uh, modding okay. uh, to add some some uh, VGA. Cool. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Very output, cool. Yeah. Uh, and nice. Some, you know, the Dream Shell and Multi BIOS. I don't know if that's the way you pronounce it in English. BIOS. Okay. Oh, cool. <laughs> BIOS. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So I don't have my Dreamcast with me right now, but during Retro Barcelona, I played Ghost Blade by Hookast mm -hmm. and Fruity or Fruity or yeah. whatever <laughs> for that, for this uh, game by Retro Guru is. 
because uh, the guy who ported the game to to the Dreamcast, Xavi Vallejo, aka Indicate, you yeah. know this guy? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah, yeah. Tom calls ca calls him the living legend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so, <laughs> he was there. He was he was selling the games, the, the physical copies for for three euros each. So I said, man, it would be a sin not to buy this for just oh, three yeah. euros because. Uh, the hmm. PC version of the game is also contained in the same disc. Really? Yeah, so... I didn't even know that. I didn't know that either. Yeah, you can stick the Dreamcast disc in the PC and it will play on that as well. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a normal... Oh. It's actually a normal CD-ROM. So, yeah. So both the oh. Dreamcast and the PC versions are uh, included in the same disc. I had no idea. So yeah, I got my copy there from Xavi and those are the two last Dreamcast games that I've been playing. Oh, oh I, I, saw, I saw pictures... Now I have to ask about this because I saw pictures of the uh, the new Dreamcast game, the uh, the Bomberman type game, and oh my god, I can't believe I forgot the Alice name. Dreams. Yeah, Alice Dreams. Did you did you see that in action? Of course. I mean, the guys from Dreamcast dot es uh, from Sega Sega Saturno <laughs> and Retrosumus, and the guys from Alice Dreams Tournament. We were all sharing the same huge booth in Retro Barcelona. Don't say too much about Retro Barcelona now. We're going to talk about that in a bit. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I saw the game in motion. Uh, we all played it and yeah, yes, we did. And I will... I will uh, shut shut my mouth. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> As always, Tom and I are on uh, different wavelengths. We, uh, I'm sorry, Tom. It's, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Carlos. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Caleb, how about yourself? What have you been doing? Uh, as you all know, because uh, we all celebrated Thanksgiving oh, uh, yeah, sorry. on Thursday. Happy, happy Thanksgiving. Yes, yes, I'm sure all of you had a great Thanksgiving. Oh, so much turkey. So much turkey. <laughs> as, as far as I know, everybody celebrates Thanksgiving. <laughs> Uh, so basically, and then Black Friday came around, and I got no Dreamcast deals on Black Friday, unfortunately. Yeah, where was my 75% off zero gun? I was looking <laughs> for that everywhere. Mm. Mm. And then I went to my mailbox, and what did I find? But my copy of Pure Solar has finally awesome. come in. And my goodness, the case that they sent it in, because they sent it kind of in a box, so I was like, oh, no, it's like, what happens if it, like, bounces around? The ca They sent this thing in the most protective plastic case I've ever seen on an independent release of any video game. It's yeah. amazing. It's sealed with a Watermelon Games uh, seal of approval, and it's it looks amazing. And I, unfortunately, have been uh, sick, so I have not had a chance to play it. But uh, as far as I can see, just as a... Independent game, this is a collector's edition already because the game is just, it's so professionally manufactured and it's, it's great. And I cannot wait to crack it open and play it. Again, I've kept myself purposely ignorant of this game, even when it was, when it was released on the PS3 and other platforms. That I, so anyways, I, I've got this game and I cannot wait to stream it. It's an amazing game and it's amazing packaging. Very happy I got this. Fantastic. Aaron, did you say you'd got the game as well? Yeah, mine came as well. And yeah, as you said, it's got this lovely uh, plastic thing with like the sealed little... Uh... And it's custom. The plastic yeah, thing yeah, is custom. They... And you know it's custom because it's got Watermelon Games emblem on, yeah. right on the plastic thing. It's amazing. What's quite funny about it as well is you, you see the little seal in it and you think, oh no, I, I'm going to have to open it to yeah. play the game but i actually managed to slip the case out of the plastic and not cut the i've been trying thing. to do that too <laughs> so now it's like oh does anyone want a, a brand new sealed copy of pier solar uh the only snag is the game's invisible but <laughs> <get the> plastic <laughs> but yeah i played it a little bit um i saw my girlfriend she bought the ps3 version of the game quite a while back and so I ended up seeing most of the game beforehand. And yeah, they did a really bloody good job with the uh, Dreamcast version. Yeah, they've added quite a few little features, which I think were patched into the downloadable versions. Like they actually let you set it so the characters are constantly moving at full speed rather than just walking slowly and then you hold a button to run. And then there's things like you can speed up the animations for the battles, which is handy if you want to get through them quickly. But then they move so quickly that it's kind of hard to tell what's going on. <laughs> so... I ended up having it on just one times anyway. And you can also change the encounter rate. So if you want to get through a dungeon without bumping into too many enemies, you can set it to like 
half times or quarter times or if you want to grind a bit and you want to fight loads of things you can set up to four times so yeah these features as far as i know were not in the downloadable version so they've added them late you know for the dreamcast version and i think they might be patching it into the others yeah i've never really been much of an rpg fan but recently thanks to that coming out and being you know excited for that release coming in i've actually been sort of getting into rpgs it helps that also if you i don't know if you saw my post on the dreamcast junkyard about what i picked up at a uh, London gaming, London gaming market. Yeah, so you picked up a few things there, didn't you? Go through those if you like as well. Yeah, I got a couple RPGs there, including the first um, El Dorado Gate uh, yeah. Volume One. Obviously, I can't read what's going on, so I can only faintly play it. But it's got really lovely graphics and nice music and all that kind of stuff. I'm just sort of messing around in that. But I've mostly been playing uh, Evolution, which is a okay. game I remember renting back when it came out, and that was back before I really had any patience with RPGs. But now uh, I feel th- I, I feel like Evolution is a really good like level entry RPG. I know it's not like a classic; it's quite basic. It's kind of poorly translated in places. Um, yeah, really simplistic sort of like dungeon crawler RPG. But I found myself really getting into it. You know, like trying to manage the items and get through the dungeons and all that kind of stuff. That's interesting to hear, actually, because it's the one game I've been meaning to play, but I've never actually gotten into. Um, I think I played it for about five minutes about ten years ago, and that's it. Obviously, if you're thinking, you know, if, if if you're someone that's played all the classic RPGs or some of them, you know, you'd probably look at this and go, oh, it's just really simplistic and nothing much to it. The story's really simple and mm-hmm. whatnot. But I don't know. It's something about it's just really appealing to me, and I've ended up putting quite a few hours into it so far. Oh. Uh, yeah, I've got quite a few other games there which I've played a little bit, but mainly it was mainly been Evolution. I've been playing some games sort of with the uh, twin sticks. Yeah, so I've got the Saturn twin sticks, and then I've got the Total Control Free that lets you use it. And I was actually trying out, um, I was trying out Out Trigger with it, which was really good with it actually. And yeah. also Mars Matrix was actually surprisingly good with it. Because oh. you could set each type of shot onto the different sticks, so you only use one stick, but you can use you can set it so the twi- like the triggers are the shooting, and then the buttons on the top are the uh, repel thing you can do in that game. So that was kind of cool to Have do. Have you tried Bangayo with it? Not yet. No, that might be quite that's another one I need to try because yeah. that would be really nice if it did work. Especially if it did work twin stick, it'd be perfect for that game. Yeah. But I'm not entirely sure if that would be the case. Um, I guess the other game I've been playing a little bit is uh, Slave Zero. I got my hands on the mm. American copy to get rid of my power one. Um, not a bad game, I suppose, but I think the main problem with that game is its frame rate. It's yeah. really kind of choppy. <laughs> it's really muddy as well, the visuals. So. Yeah, it's a bit... It's not too bad. Uh, quite blocky in places, but like I don't know. It's all right. I like that they give you a first-person mode in it, so it just plays like a first-person shooter. One thing I remember in reviews for that game, they said it was didn't really look very city-like. You know, it's supposed to be your giant robot and everyone's driving around. And sometimes you see little cars driving around and little people, but not many. But it's really fun to sort of, like, walk in front of, like, where cars are driving and they try to drive around you and then they're like, just <laughs> driving off the bridges. <laughs> you see them just, like, crash into each other and stuff. It's quite quite amusing. Mainly what I've been playing. I've bought a load more games than that, but most of those I've only put, like, half hour into, so... Cool. That's a good uh, good selection. Uh, I won't go on too long for what I've been doing, but I've been playing a little bit of a GQ Powerful Pro Baseball. Uh, you may have seen an article I wrote on the Junkhead about that mm. uh, yesterday. That actually looked really interesting. <laughs> it's so much fun. It, it's really e- easy to pick up and play. Uh, the controls are just really intuitive. Uh, even though there's not a single scrap mm. of English throughout the entire game or in the manual, it's really yeah. easy to just suss out what you meant to do. I was quite surprised to find out it was like sprite-based when you put up screenshots for it. I always just assumed it was going to be 3D. Yeah, the, 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 and because my capture device is really crap, it makes the pictures look really pixelated, but it's it's really smooth on the screen, on the TV screen. Mm. The, the, the uh, sprite oh, yeah. work is really, really good. Now, Gagaman, is, uh, was that one of the games that you tried to play with the fishing controller? It wasn't that one. It was uh, World Series. All right, well... Was, oh, no, it was the Maracas with World Series You know Series what you got to do? you gotta, you got <laughs> to try to use uh, either the Maracas or the fishing controller to try to play that game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I've also been playing... Uh, Capcom versus SNK and, and King of Fighters 99. For, uh, King of Fighters 99 for two reasons. I also picked up the uh, the Dream Connector, which is a thing for... It's like a cheap version of the Total Control. Mm. You put PlayStation and Saturn joypads in. 
and it works perfectly. It's amazing. Even with driving games like Sega Rally 2, it actually makes it more playable with the D-pad rather than the analog nice. stick. I don't know why, but it seems <laughs> to. It's great. I should try that with... Uh crazy taxi or something because i remember getting blisters from playing crazy taxi so much when it first came out because of the little bubbles on the analog stick oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Every, everybody talks about that but i figure it's just you know y'all have weak thumbs or something because i've never uh, I, I personally have never run into that problem and i've played the dreamcast lots <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have run into that problem but uh, because of playing uh, Capcom versus NSYNC, SNK way too much <laughs> I mean for hours uh, well late into the night uh, really huge blisters you gotta get fun. those tiger knees tiger knees <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, apart from that, I'd be playing uh, Sonic Wings 2 on the Neo Geo CD, which is yeah. brilliant. And uh, modern stuff, WRC 5 and Advanced Warfare on the PS4, but we don't want to talk about that. Ugh, boring. Interestingly, just moving on to the next subject, the uh, the Dreamcast is uh, it's 17 years old this week, or last week, when, depending on when you're listening to this. So yeah, uh, happy birthday to the Dreamcast, I suppose we, uh, we should be saying. But it doesn't seem like 17 years ago, does it, that it came uh, out? I mean, a lot of people, like me, I mean, I didn't... I never had any video games growing up, so the reason I got into the Dreamcast because that was literally my first console that I got when I was actually had my own money to buy a console, you know? And that was at the end of the Dreamcast's life cycle, really. So I think a lot of people did that because the Dreamcast was very affordable and amazing at the end of its life cycle. So, yeah, a lot of people, you know, $20 used, like $50 new. There was a brief period of time where a lot of people like me picked it up. Carlos, I've got a question for you. Can you remember the, the launch in Spain, like the European launch of the Dreamcast? Well, I remember those international ads. Hmm. You know, the those you had the bullfighter saying, you know, ole. <laughs> oh, yeah, and then you had the English yeah. one saying, come and have a go if you think you had enough, to the French guy, and then the... Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. The, the, French, the French guy saying, <laughs> uh, all your women uh, want to sleep with us. Which I, <laughs> I remember, that's what it says, yeah. I mean, yeah, I remember thinking, what the hell are you are you talking about? Like, <laughs> um, you know, I, 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 I remember feeling uh, sort of offended, Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. Adverts in Europe for the drink are so kind of bad. Oh yeah, totally. Yeah. <laughs> but but you know, I, I I sort of I sort of liked the the, the bullfighter one. I thought it was funny. Uh, then I remember uh, the the barber. You know that, that barber yes. you have been trying to to chase <laughs> to chase across the globe. Yeah. Um, I remember that. that Tom's that, mystery uh, man. Yeah, because it was uh, translated, of course, mm -hmm. and uh, dubbed in Spanish. Uh, the, the the whole uh, why don't we play together? Yeah. Uh, Por qué no jugamos juntos? Uh, so it was. It me? sounded really. Uh, it's 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 really well. It's a literal translation, and it. I remember it sounded really exciting. You know, really uh, inspiring. Really, man, I want to be a part of this. Yeah. You know, I want to wh whatever whatever that means. Because I <laughs> didn't. I th I think. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think I didn't even have a. a proper internet connection at home so uh, when i saw that i'm not sure i really uh, you know <laughs> back in this day yeah i knew what it was knew the concept of it kind of thing yeah i, I mean uh, it was a few years ago already and I, I i remember i thought i i'm not sure it means what i think it means but but you know i feel i want to be a part of this i want that console because it looks so cool it, it, it i knew it meant Sega is looking cool again. You know, I I hadn't had that feeling uh, like at school, for, for example, uh, when talking about my my Saturn. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. I, loved, I know how that felt. I loved, <laughs> <laughs> I loved uh, Virtual Fighter Two or uh, yeah, Sonic, Sonic Jam, mm. but yeah. but I there wasn't that that. Uh, feeling of being the, the cool guy <laughs> As, <laughs> you know i know exactly what you mean yeah in my school i i think i may have been the only kid in the entire school that had a sad there was about three of us in my school so i wasn't completely alone carlos one quick question and um, i've heard right that the the barber advert was actually filmed in spain and that the the barber himself is actually a real barber so if you could just if you could just drive around spain looking for this guy for me that would <laughs> i have TV i really have no idea <laughs> <laughs> Did you, uh, who told you that? Are you, are you sure it was filmed in Spain, or you're you're just kidding me, right? No, no. One of the guys who worked at Sega during the time of of the Dreamcast, uh, he he said that that's what he'd heard. <laughs> okay, Tom. One of these days, you're gonna have to face facts and just look at the numbers. <laughs> He's probably dead. That now. was 18 years.
15 years ago. You know what I'm saying? He's, he's probably, he didn't, he was a healthy living guy, you know? <laughs> right, uh, so yeah, it's um, Dreamcast, 17 years old. Um, it's amazing, mine still all work fantastically well. I'm sure your guys does, yours, you guys, <laughs> Dreamcast. When I can speak English properly... Your Dreamcasts all work fine as well. <laughs> mm. <laughs> all Dreamcasts working fine. Um, interestingly, this week I also, or last week even, I also got something else, which was um, the Neo Geo Pocket Link cable. I did also do an article about this on the Junkyard. But Rob, you're quite a fan of the Neo Geo Pocket. I am. Yeah, totally. Yeah, you asked me. To, me too. Yeah, well, I'm sure we all are. Um, I, I just. Rob wanted me to report back on my um, my findings with the Neo Geo Pocket Link Cable, and I must say, I was a little underwhelmed by what you can actually do with it, um, because it only really works with two <laughs> games that I own. I've, yeah. I own King of Fighters mm. R2, and then that one will com- communicate with uh, King of Fighters 99 Evolution and King of Fighters... Yeah. Is it just King of Fighters 99, the American version? And, and basically all it does is, mm. it, it, if you go into the menu on the... Um, if you go into the... The menu on the, uh, on the on the Dreamcast game, you can uh, choose to uh, communicate, and then all you're allowed to do really is just to unlock like artwork or different. Um, I think they're called strikers in the King of Fighters games on the Dreamcast. Uh, yeah. So there's not yeah, yeah, there's yeah. not really a great deal that you can actually do with it. Uh, it's nice to have as a, a little piece of like memorabilia and a, a nice cool item, but yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a for me anyway a bit of a missed opportunity. I know there's other games that use it, but I don't own them, so I've not been able to try it with those. In a way, it kind of sounds like the Dreamcast equivalent. of of amiibo because like those you just sort of unlock like tiny things in the games as well they don't have like a huge yeah deal yeah. with them it, sound, it kind of sounds similar to that really yes yeah, i see what you're saying yeah like they just they just help you gain more points you know i, I know in kept on versus s and k you can gain points for the shop in the dreamcast game and if you play the uh, SNK versus Capcom Chaos on the OGO Pocket, it lets you gain points and you can trade them between both because both games have shops in them that unlock yeah. the content. So basically, they just help you unlock content faster. Yeah, I like the idea. I like that's that's always always the thing with the pocket, the, the that link cable between the two. I like that idea. You could play on your Dreamcast, and then you go out work, and you com- you're on the bus, and you're commuting, and you're still helping yourself to unlock things on the game, but you can do it on your pocket color. But getting a little bit like the VMU yeah. in some ways. Yeah, yeah. I, I like the VMU as your pocket color. I, I mean, I don't like the way you can't see the screen a lot of the time. You have to have perfect lighting conditions. But uh, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's it's but good. If you do have good light, that screen is great. Like it is, the screen is amazing. It's beautiful, it's so, like crystal clear. Like all the little pixels, you can see every little detail. Listen it's to our lovely. <laughs> I'm listening. I'm, I'm, I'm taking it on board. I'm, I'm digesting it. And that like... micro switch stick is still the best thing ever. I love that micro six. Yeah, it's noisy, but like you, you can you can sit in bed and not wake anyone up <laughs> with it. Going, do you mean this? That's, That's it. it. Yeah. Beautiful. That's the it's one. Like li- it's like listening. <laughs> Had it at hand. It's like listening to Mozart. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rob, Rob, Rob. We need to chat. <laughs> um, <laughs> we need to talk. <laughs> now, I think we'll move on slightly. A little bit of a change of tack. Um, a few weeks ago, we spoke about this uh, mystery Gundam disc that came up on eBay. Yes. Oh, yeah. And um, we were. Well, we were in a bit of a bidding war with uh, persons unknown, shall we say. And and I was mm-hmm. kind of a bit annoyed that, you know, eventually the, 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 the auction got to a point where I, was, I wasn't prepared to bid any higher for it because I just thought, I don't really know what this is that I'm going to be getting if I do win it. And also, it's a lot of money. It, it ended up going for like something like 180 euros or something. <laughs> now, I can't say too much about this, but it's, it, what's the word? It's been revealed to me that... Um, your, 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 your network spies have reported back to you. You mean. Indeed, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I've been contacted by a person, again, persons unknown, who shall remain unknown for, for now anyway. I actually know who actually won the disc, and there's some exciting information coming up in the next couple of weeks. I can't say any more than that. You can probably guess what it is, but um, yeah, the game will not be going into someone's private collection. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I've, I've been sworn to secrecy. Myself and I think you, maybe you, Carlos, have both been sworn to secrecy. I'd like to add that I've been in contact with that uh, <laughs> network of spies uh, for, for some years now. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, um, yeah, it's all a bit hush hush, but rest assured, it's coming soon. Hopefully, maybe. Didn't hear that from me. Okay. Um, Actually, no, sorry to interrupt you, Tom. Uh, a, a couple of friends and, and I, myself, were asked to to you know uh, to donate 
mm-hmm. a little money for uh, in order to win that auction then auction you know i mean uh, we were asked for help <laughs> in order to, to be able to get that disc. Yeah, I mean, and when, when it was revealed who had actually won the disc, um, I made a small donation as well, to, you know, after the fact. So, um, okay. yeah, it, it really is a kind of a community. It's a community effort, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's, yeah. it's, it's really cool that we've managed to, oh, not, not us, but, you know, who, who has acquired this has managed to do so and is, is doing what they plan to do. So, yeah, it's exciting times. Hmm. Good, good stuff. Cool. Uh, it's always good when it goes to someone that can actually do something with it and... You know, not just shove it on the shelf and go, well, that's mine now. It's yeah. all mine. Yeah. <laughs> no one else gets to see it. Yeah. Seal this in plastic and it will <laughs> never be opened ever. <laughs> Uh, let's move on to our, to our main topic of discussion. It's you, Carlos. As I said earlier in the... This is your life. <laughs> oh, <hi. laughs> earlier in the episode, we are joined by Carlos Oliveros from Retro Summers. Uh, now, you are a uh, obviously a Spanish development team, and you're working uh-huh. on several games at the moment. Several, well, two very interesting-looking games. Uh, certainly games that haven't really been tried before. Certainly from independent developers on the Dreamcast. Really, I just wanted to talk a little bit about, you know, about you guys, how you got together, and also, you know, the games that you're developing. What's the what's the vision? What's the the aim of, of what what you do? Can we start at the beginning? Like, how did Retro Summers become what you are today? How did you meet, get together? Uh, I think it all began with Peer Solar. <laughs> actually uh yeah i mean i was when you when you guys were talking about the the dreamcast version uh i was about to interrupt you uh, again uh to add that i was one of the translators for for peer solar i mean i i helped ah, i helped translate okay. the game uh into spanish then oh, nice. i translated all the uh, extra stuff for the for the hd versions of the game and mm. for the dreamcast version as well uh right. mm. Yeah. So, Ooh. so yeah, I was very impressed when I, uh, when I received my, uh, you know, it's a very nice box, the, the collector's edition, uh, because oh, it's yeah. so well designed, you know, it's, it's crafted, uh, so full of detail. Uh, but then I sold it, I sold it, uh, during Retro Barcelona <laughs> hmm. because I really don't have the patience for, for RPGs. Uh, anyway. Uh, the thing is, the thing is, we all met because of Peer Solar, because I, as I said, I helped translate uh, translate the game into Spanish. Then I put, uh, I actually, I, I was the, I was guilty of putting Tulio from Watermelon and Chui, uh, also known as Daniel Lancha, uh, the lead programmer for for uh, Peer Solar HD. Uh, I put them in contact. So, okay. yeah, so I introduced uh, Chewy to Tulio. Then I began to to talk to Chewy more often, you know, while he was programming or reprogramming the game. And I was translating all the new stuff and beta testing the game again. We began to talk more often. Then Abel, who is with us uh, in the team as well, uh, he, was, he, was, uh, he was responsible for the Mode 7 stage of Pier Solar. You know, he dis- he redesigned that stage in 3D. He's a 3D designer, and and then one day uh, we we decided to to create something of our own. You know, to to get together and we said, okay, we should you know we should uh, explore some genres or uh, game mechanics that we think that uh, you know haven't been tackled yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, so often. Uh, like, you know, uh, on rail shooters, you know, like a space harrier, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. or yeah. Uh, visual novels, uh, visual novels have been, uh, you know, so, uh, so popular in Japan for about 30 mm. years. And it's, a uh, uh, it's a gender that hasn't, uh, you know, it, it has, uh, it has never really evolved 
you know, uh, beyond its original concept. Uh, the, the only mm. thing we had new, uh, you know, in games like X Blaze for the PS3 is they have some, some animation, some uh, voice work, stuff like that, but not really any new game mechanics. So we thought, okay, a visual novel, but with some, some, some new, new stuff, uh, puzzles to solve, uh, maybe some other new mechanics we don't really want to reveal yet. <laughs> oh, it's fine. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's cool. Okay, cool. So, as you guys know, uh, these are our our two projects right now: Ameba, a visual novel, uh, western western made visual novel, western set visual novel as well. Uh, it's hmm. set in Madrid, Spain, and Xenocider is a uh, is our personal three D tribute. To Space Harrier. Yes, yes. I'll come to Xenocida in a second, but with uh, Amoeba, uh, I think it's important and also quite um, cool that it's a, a, an original take on what is generally a it's it's a it's a genre that is populated mainly by anime style yeah. visual novels. And yeah. what I like about mm. Amoeba is the fact that it's it's like a film noir. It's a it's a, it's got a very European flavour to it, and that's that's what's original. Mm. That's what yeah. I like about it. Yeah, totally. Thank you. Yeah. I I, I hmm. love personally the character design of Hugo because I, I it's, he's just such an interesting looking guy. It's like wow, this is bearded exactly. looking dude. It's like I can't like a detective hmm. story. That's that's really interesting to me. I knew I wanted a more uh, mature looking uh, main character. Uh, I knew I didn't I didn't need a handsome a young handsome officer or you know. You want someone who's like weather beaten, who's like he's been there, done it, seen it. You know, he's he's kind of got a lot of history behind him. Exactly. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. See, a lot of these games like uh, Snatcher and like Police Knots, there's always some story element there to re to kind of explain why this young looking guy would have such like you know such a deep plot with such uh, you know a background to him. But it just it always made me upset. There's never like just you know, a real. A real life <laughs> dude, nice, beard, nice bearded dude. God, I just, I just love the fact there's a main character with a beard. The beard. <laughs> ten out of ten. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is, uh, I, I really, I really wanted a character that could, uh, that could really have a believable past, like, hmm. like he, uh, he's feeling guilty uh, for about something that happened. 20 years ago. So I needed a character that could have been an, ad- an adult 20 years ago. Mm. You know, uh, someone who, who could have been already uh, working at the Spanish police 20 years ago. Someone who, re- who can tell you uh, great stories, you know, from 20 years ago. And, yeah. and I want all of that to actually make sense uh, in the story. You know, so so uh, it, it's it's all going to be uh, inspired by, uh, well, by true stories that have happened uh, in our country. <laughs> so, so it was interesting. So I was going to ask if you'd chosen to set it in Madrid for a specific reason, other than that you know Madrid pretty well, or stories you mentioned that happened in real life are were they set in Madrid? Well, there's. Uh, there's two reasons mainly. Uh, we want to we want to tell a story that is inspired by, you know, real stuff that has happened there. Yeah. Real stuff you can find there. Also, we can show uh, recognizable environments. You know, like the I don't know, like the Plaza de España, Spain Square, uh-huh. <laughs> uh, okay. or I don't know this uh, this subway entrance. This very uh, recognizable royal palace or stuff like that. Sure, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. You know, we want to show, uh, to feature real places, real environments. But also I thought, okay, people may be uh, expecting us to show, uh, to, to feature a main character that's uh, that reminds them of, say, uh, Bruce Willis, you know? I, I don't know, a, a, a cop from New York or, or something like that. But I, But I said... Okay, I'm not uh, Woody uh, Woody Allen, you know? <laughs> so I, I really, I mean, I've been to New York, but I don't really know New York New York so well, you know, as as to tell a really believable story set in New York. Then I'm not uh-huh. um, Guy uh, Guy Ritchie, 
Is that the correct sure. answer? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh, no, I mean, I love. <laughs> I mean, I honestly love his movies, but I could never tell a compelling, believable story set in London, for example. You know, so yeah, it's like, yeah. man. That's that's good to write from what you yeah. know. You know. So I, I don't I don't want to uh, I don't want to break in here too much. Uh, but I do want to ask, so uh, can you say if the story is going to be set in, like, you know, modern times, or is it kind of in the future? No, or? it's, it's a, a current current day. It's absolutely current day. That's really interesting to me, because there's been so many mm -hmm. uh, of these games that have actually come to the West. And I'm talking about games that are, you know, quasi, like Rise of the Dragon, Snatcher, A Police House. And they're always set in, like, the yeah. Blade Runner future of, like, New York City or some future thing. So it's, I, 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 I don't think any modern game has ever come to the West where they actually put the setting in, like, a, just a, yeah. just a, it's, mm -hmm. it's happening right along yeah, this that's time. that's right. I mean, in somewhere I, that's like a, a believable that place. Made sense, you know, just to 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 set the story in a in a current uh, real uh, environment in current day. So, I actually uh, I have been in contact for um, with a Spanish police uh, commissioner for some time oh, wow. now, because I oh, cool. yeah because uh, we want to to make things as I said believable. So I, That's I, some good research. I mean, I mean, I don't want uh, a potential buyer of the game, you know, a potential user, player, to to be playing the game, and and to think, man, that's not how Spanish police works, you know. <laughs> I mean, I mean, uh, because people expect uh, our main character to act like, you know, uh, CSI, you know, the the, the TV show, sure, yeah. or to, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean, or or, or like. Or like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, God, or like, yeah, like uh, played out. Boy, played and out. Scully from from the X Files. Yeah. I mean, people who <laughs> people who uh, investigate run, um, uh, jump through through the uh, roofs and and chase the criminals, <laughs> and then also perform the um, autopsy. Is that the yeah. Okay. I mean, <laughs> that's a really good point I can, I mean it's been a while since there's been a game like that the only game I can think of that yeah. actually did that was Police Quest and that game was so interesting because they actually worked with real policemen yeah. and did something that was like by the rules so yeah, it was very interesting actually, uh, well this is not something I really wanted to reveal but yeah, why not uh, we, would like, we would like to perhaps we would like to dedicate the game to, well, to some real life uh, policemen or police women, you know, to, to dedicate the game to policemen and police women who, you know, who enjoy their their job, who who yeah. do their job because they believe in it, you know, th this kind of thing. Because yeah, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, I totally understand. Yeah, Carlos. Um, while we're t talking about uh, your your games, uh, I wanted to touch a little bit on. Um, Xenocider as well. Now, Xenocider is going to be an, an homage to uh, to things like Space Harrier. And um, is it true to say maybe a little bit like Star Wing as well, Star Fox? Mm, well, I'm not sure there's a Star Fox influence uh, okay. on my part, but mm -hmm. I know Chewie uh, has been a Nintendo fanboy for decades now. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean... Uh, I think that's the only Ugh. the only thing that gets us into arguments from time to time, <laughs> <laughs> because he, because uh, Dreamcast is the only Sega console he's he's owned, and the only Sega console that he has really liked. Uh, hmm. Only last year, I think, or two years ago, I sold him his first uh, Sega Saturn, and since then he's been uh, tampering with it, and you know. Doing his his homework, his <laughs> research about the console. So, okay, the thing is, maybe uh, for him, yeah, maybe there's a Star Fox influence. But our main influence are uh, Space Harrier, of course, uh, Sin and Punishment. Oh yeah, for the, yes. for the Nintendo sixty four. Nice. Oh yeah. yeah because our main nice. character uh, is going to be uh, not always uh, flying like like Space Harrier. But uh, walking, running, jumping, there will be platforms mm. to nice. jump to jump on, or to uh, to to blast in order to to you know to go through. 
and obstacles and stuff like that. It's so exciting to see uh, something like this because, um, you know, you've got a lot of games that come out, you know, that things like Ghostblade. Um, I like Ghostblade. It's a great game, but it's in a, it's in the traditional mold of other games that we've seen before from independent developers. This is a new, this is a new 3D game. And that's why I'm so excited by it, especially because I'm a mm. fan of Space Harrier as well. And I mean, for those people who are listening who maybe not seen Xenocider, um, if you just go to Google and, and type Xenocider, it's spelled X E N. O C I D E R. You will see your know, early screenshots of this. What again? It's an homage to Space Harrier, and it just looks it looks great. Uh, I've seen some of your uh, concept art as well for the different types of enemies that are going to be in the game. Oh. They look really interesting. You've got that big jellyfish thing, and like you know, like the the rock people. You know, that f- uh, throw the rocks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I just think it looks really hmm. uh, it looks really cool. I, I just love the visual style of it. I'm currently uh, working our next video. Uh, that's going to to feature the first uh, stage boss mm. for that stage, oh, okay. that desert stage. So uh. yeah, uh, hopefully in a few days you can <laughs> you can check out the uh, the design for that stage boss. Awesome. Nice. Uh, now I know this is a very long shot, uh, but is there any chance you'd be considering doing the whole three D glasses thing uh, in some fu- functionality compatible with the Master System three D? <laughs> I'm I'm basically saying that as a joke. The last the last <laughs> time I played Space Harrier was on oh, the wow. Master System with the glasses. The 3DS. Um, well, we really hadn't thought about <laughs> it. You know, I can ask Chewie if maybe there's a way of I don't know. Packing some red and blue uh, glasses with the game. <laughs> <laughs> it was mainly a joke. Maybe we could include, uh, you know, some, yeah, these uh, cardboard 3D glasses <laughs> inside the case, uh, even if they, yeah. you know, even if they are completely useless. <laughs> I think that's an actually great idea. <laughs> did you see uh, House of the Dead Overkill on the PS3 did that? They actually packaged it with a... Yeah, uh, yeah, I have, yeah, I have that game, yes, yes. I like that. <laughs> yeah, it was cool. While we're on the subject for, for asking for things for you to put in the game, can you do a, a Tyra Jaguar version as well? <laughs> <laughs> a what? I'm, so, I'm so sorry, I didn't hear you, but... Uh, <laughs> just ignore me, I'm talking rubbish. Um, <laughs> what, one other thing I wanted to ask while we're on this subject is, um, what's the, what is the retro gaming scene like in Spain? Is it quite, is it quite big? Is it quite popular? I think uh, we can't complain. <laughs> I mean, we, we've we had uh, Retro Madrid for, I don't know, uh, 15 years now, I think. Okay. And Retro Barcelona for, I think, three or four years now. And for, for what I've been told, uh, they are among the biggest or best uh, retro indie events in, in Europe. I, th- I think there's a very uh, active scene uh, Around the the Spectrum and Amstrad and the, well, the whole yeah the whole Commodore uh, Commodore um, computers and and all that and then there's uh, teams like uh, 1985 Alternativo oh yeah you know the guys uh, the guys who developed uh, Omami Genesis oh, and, of course, yeah. and who are developing uh, Antarex oh you know this, yeah. Yeah, this is a shmup for for the Mega Drive. Oh man! Uh, I played <laughs> I played the game uh, a couple of weeks ago in Retro Barcelona, and I think they are doing a fantastic cool. job. Oh, look forward uh, to that! Really, I mean, there's there's some uh, really neat graphic effects, some great pixel art. Nice. Uh, so really, I'm really eager to to get a copy of that. Hmm. Um, well, also there's the the we call them Mojon Twins, Mojon Twins. I don't know these guys who developed uh, some Spectrum games, the U W O L. Do you know this game, uh, Quest for Money? Yeah, I think it, it was, was, was. It was released on the Spectrum and the Mega Drive. Yeah, I've heard of the Mega Drive one. Yeah, yeah, and um, and then well, there's. Uh, I always wanted to pick those up, the uh, Mega Drive indies. It's a. It's a 
funny little game. Yeah, I think I missed out on Oh Mummy. I think that's like sort of vanished now. But I always found it strange that there's there's not a lot of indie games for the Mega CD because you'd think with it being a CD format, there'd be a lot of Mega CD that's indie true. games. But a lot of the ones for the Mega Drive come out on cartridge. Yeah, that is that is interesting because it is you can easily sort of make games that would run on it. I mean, I know there was a Sonic ROM hack that was actually released for Mega CD. Like you could actually just burn it and play it on there. Yeah. You were, you were talking about the Sonic Mega Mix? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I love that one. Mm. It seems to me that, you know, the, the not not even, not just the Dreamcast, but the retro scene in general is, uh, it's not just big here in, in the UK. It's big sort of all over sort of mainland Europe as well, obviously, and, and the US. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's been, it's been really cool hearing some, you know, what is essentially exclusive you know, news from from excuse the excuse the expression, Carlos, but from the horse's mouth, uh, from from yourself, you know, <laughs> you're the guy who is uh, creating these games, and uh, it's really cool to you know be able to talk to you about them. One thing, um, what I mean, I don't want to kind of put pressure onto you. I'll put you on the spot, but when are you kind of looking to release these games? Is there anything set in in stone yet, or is it just kind of loose? Absolutely not in stone. Okay, <laughs> I mean, uh, I think not less than a year from now. Okay. Uh, we would like, I mean, we would like to release Ameba in maybe, maybe one year from now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I can, I cannot talk about the an estimated release date for Shinocider because we are currently, we are currently looking into it, uh, both, you know, uh, with Abel, our 3D designer mm-hmm. and with, a with a certain, publisher yeah we have been in talks with okay so uh i don't really want to talk about uh no it's cool you know, no, that's fine. Yeah. It makes perfect sense no, but, um, yeah i just want to say thank you for uh, for giving us all that i mean it's uh, it's cool that there's yeah. stuff still coming out for the dreamcast and that you are one of the main people so yeah thank, thank you for your efforts Getting some more new so- genres as well which haven't really been touched on the dreamcast at all outside of like some japanese visual novels but otherwise you know getting a new visual novel and a space area style game is really awesome <laughs> yeah yeah let's uh, let's move on to our to our next topic and that is i don't know if you guys have seen this Pix and Love Editions, they are the team, the publishing house, who are responsible for the quite awesome History of Sonic the Hedgehog book. Uh, has anyone seen this? Yeah, uh, I've got the Sonic book. I've seen it. I don't own it. It's really good. It's, it's, it's really high quality. Um, basically, th- they have released an image on Facebook this week uh, of, a, um, of a, a prototype Dreamcast shell that I've never, certainly never seen before. And apparently hmm. it, is, it is genuine. Uh, it's come from Sega Japan, I believe. And uh, hmm. this also tells me that they are looking at releasing a Dreamcast book, which is, yeah, pretty exciting. Um, so uh, I don't know if you had any thoughts about this this book and what you know what it may contain. Jump in, anyone? Can we just talk about like this prototype that they did show off? Hmm. I think it's probably believable, but I'm just curious about this logo on it, the thing that says, like, Planet, and it's got, like, an S in the middle planet s yeah it's really planet sega or something i don't know but you can kind of tell it's like a sort of early version of what they ended up going with because it's mostly the same except they just sort of changed some shapes and they moved the light from where the controllers are brought it up to the top for those people who've not seen it basically um it, the, the, this prototype dreamcast shell it, it looks for all intents and purposes exactly the same as a standard dreamcast but um the the Buttons on the top are triangular and sort of point downwards to the outer corners of the Dreamcast shell. And then the, the um, triangular light, as Aaron just said, has been moved from the, the, the CD drawer or the CD lid down to the front where the controllers, the controller ports are. So it's not that different. Also, the little the little squares that go around the outside of the um, the CD door have actually been moved as well. But as we as again as Aaron just said, the the logo is it says Planet S, and that doesn't really mean much to to me at least anyway so but it could be something that's just not been discovered by anyone yet obviously we knew about project Drow and katana being like the prototype names of the two different systems that they were juggling about before they decided on one of them like the katana i think was the one they went with and um 
yeah, there might have been loads of other ideas in between there. Planet S might have been another name that they had at some point. It's hard to say. I mean, I, I haven't, as I said, I've seen the Sonic one. I have, I don't own any of these editions, but they are obviously lovely. But what I'm, what I'm amazed with is how well connected Pix and Love appear to be, because almost as if they went, yeah, we're going to do a Dreamcast edition, and just immediately got. Got that. I don't know if it would have been immediate. They must have been chatting with Sega for quite a while, and obviously they've got contact with Sega because of the Sonic book, and I think they've done other books in the past that involve in Sega. Like, I think there was like a Mega Drive book of some kind that only came out in France. Yeah, that was interesting that you said, Aaron, that a lot they've done a lot of other console books, but they only ever came mm. out in France. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, hopefully they They've, will release very this Very few of their books have been translated. They they do books almost all the time. I mean, I'm subscribed to them on my... I've got like an email subscription ever since I bought the Sonic book a while back. And uh, yeah, they seem to be putting out books every so often. I think they've got a Final Fantasy one coming out. They've been doing all sorts. I just thought it was interesting. I thought it was worth talking about this because, um, yeah, it's, it, it's not going to be... I, I can't see it being um, in like, direct competition with the book that we're potentially looking at releasing because... We're doing it as it's going to be kind of like a fan made one, like fans for the fans kind of thing. Um, but yeah. I, I'm really interested to see what what they do. And if they, if, there, if there is new dream if they uncover some stuff, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'm I'm all for that. I, I'd love to be able to see some new uh, some new Dreamcast prototypes. Uh, so yeah, it's um, it's interesting. Did you see that Mega Drive book that was made by Read Read Only Memory a while back? Uh, British yes. publisher. They yeah, wrote they that book. I, I have that book. I have that book and I yeah, love it. they managed to uncover some like concept arts of early designs from the Mega Drive and early controller designs and all that kind of stuff. So maybe we will get some stuff like that for this Dreamcast one. Yeah, that book is full of great, great content. Yeah, it's got some really nice uh, concept art. Like it's got an early version of the Western box art for Gunstar Heroes, and they were going to go for a more realistic look rather than what they went with <laughs> it's really weird and there's some there's some really uh, interesting concept art for uh song the hedgehog for instance yeah. and and some uh, designs for um, stuff that's never been seen fa- before yeah yeah and some designs for the fantasy star series as well i really love that yeah it's a great book all right guys um is there any other business that we we would like to discuss uh actually carlos i know you've got some quite big news that you wanted to share with us you uh, you have the floor sir <laughs> <laughs> well yeah uh when when tom invited me invited me to to join the dream pod i told him that maybe it was the right time to to share some some news with you guys okay. uh, because as may you you guys may know already uh we have uh, we announced that we want to release Amoeba not only on PC and Dreamcast, but also on the Sega Saturn. Oh, wow. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean... Makes sense uh, to me. <laughs> yeah, the Saturn has been, uh, like, you know, the tough girl for for, <laughs> you know, for, for so many years now. It's like, sh- like, the, like untouchable, you know? <laughs> yeah, even back when it was out, most developers didn't know what yeah. to do with it. So. Well, yeah. <laughs> uh, so... As I said, Chewy has been tampering with the uh, with his Saturn for about two years now, I think. So, oh. uh, so oh. we we are yeah we are sure that there is a way that we can release Amoeba oh. on the Saturn. That'd and, be amazing. Yeah. Do so, you think it'd be like in high resolution mode or anything like that? Well, I cannot confirm that yet. No, of course. You know, not. I mean, I mean, we we will that try. Would be cool, I mean, yeah, we will try, but we cannot really confirm that yet. No. The thing, the thing is, we will release the game in a in a box that uh, resembles the the old Japanese cardboard boxes that contained, uh, you know, the extra memory, the extra RAM memory card. Yes, I know what you oh. mean. Yeah, cool. No. Oh, wow. So the game is going to make use of the of the of the cartridge. Yes. Oh, wow. The <laughs> wow. That sounds really cool. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. yeah that's, I mean, awesome. that's that's the piece of news I, I, I wanted to share. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah, I mean so the game will be packaged in a in a cardboard box because that cardboard box will contain the well the, the disc in a jewel case and okay. also a custom made cartridge. 
Wow. Carlos, the, the thing is now, I, I'm in, I've got a bit of a dilemma, so now I have to choose, do I get the green yeah, stuff version or do I get the satin version? I want the satin version. <laughs> <laughs> this is, a, for that. This oh, is an, a really evil, thinking. evil plan of ours <laughs> to, make people, to make people buy both. <laughs> <laughs> I always loved I always loved the uh, Sega CD games where there was the cartridge and the CD. So you got like the CD quality music, and then you got the boost from the oh, CD, so and it would play the CD audio with the Mega Drive cart. Yeah, well, there you go, people. You, you heard that here first. Yeah, that's uh, that's amazing news. Thank you for yeah, sharing it with yeah. us, Carlos. Exclusive. Thank you for having me, guys. Wow, I don't know how I don't know how I can actually you know compose myself <laughs> after hearing that news. <laughs> <laughs> actually, you know. Uh, a couple of weeks ago in Retro Barcelona, uh, we at uh, Retro Sumus, uh, we, we like to joke uh, by saying that we uh, made our first sort of investment. We decided to buy uh, one of these uh, box sets, you know, the, the game and card, uh, and card uh, box for the Saturn. Uh, hmm. We said, okay, let's, let's look around, find a booth where they are uh, selling uh, retro, retro games. And find the cheapest, uh, find the cheapest one because we are going to, to break the box apart to, <laughs> to, to measure it, to try to replicate it uh, as, as carefully so, as we can. I presume you ended up with the Ultraman game then. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would have loved to, to find that game because it's, uh, it's, it's awful. I mean, <laughs> so, <laughs> it, so it wouldn't have been, uh, you know, so painful to break it apart. But sadly, <laughs> We found a copy of uh, Fatal Fury uh, Real Bout Special. Ah, okay. That it was only 15 euros, I think. So we said, okay, okay, okay let's buy this one. So, you, sacrificed uh, that, you sacrificed that then? Yeah, I'm sorry, <laughs> yes. Special's pretty good. Yeah, I, mean, I love the game. I love the game. But... <laughs> come on, come on! <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I, will, I think I will keep the game, but sadly the box will have to die. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for a great cause, though. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, guys. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, that will pretty much do it for this episode of the Dream Pod. I mean, there's been so much like interesting and fantastic yeah. stuff on this episode. Yeah. I'm, I'm shaking with excitement. Um, unless there's anything <laughs> else anybody else wants to uh, wants to just kind of dive into quickly. I'll take that as a no. Okay. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, so this has been uh, this has been episode twenty of the Dream Pod. Um, once again, I want to give my utmost thanks to Carlos for joining us and being a fantastic guest host. Thank um, you. So, thank you, Carlos. Um, thank and you. Uh, yeah, is there anything that you wanted to uh, give a shout out to? I mean, your Twitter account or website or anything like that. Well, you can you can follow us on Facebook dot com uh, slash Retrosumus. Uh, on Twitter, YouTube, and now SoundCloud as well, all with the same uh, username. And well, please stay tuned uh, because we will release our next uh, Death Diaries video, in, hopefully in the next few days. And well, congratulations for 20 great episodes of the Dream Pod. Well, thank you. <laughs> I, there, there's been tw- there's been twenty. I'm not sure if they've all been great. <laughs> yeah. <you're well. laughs> um, thanks very much again, Carlos. Uh, obviously, the usual team is also here. Uh, thank you, Rob, for joining us. You're on Twitter at Ah oh, Nicholas J. And you can also find Rob at uh, at t3.com. Oh, he's you a, can. Yeah. He's, he's a big. He's a that's a t3 at t3.com. I think is the Twitter yeah. handle. Um, yeah. You can find uh, Aaron on Twitter at the Gagaman. At the Gagaman, yeah. Caleb is on YouTube at uh, Blandco, I believe it is. Yes, it is. Indeed. And you can find me on Twitter at Tom Lee C. And you can also find me sort of floating around the Facebook page. That's the Dreamcast Junkyard Facebook. That's facebook.com forward slash the Dreamcast Junkyard. And also you can find my and the rest of the guys' ramblings on the Dreamcast Junkyard main site, which is www.thedreamcastjunkyard.co.uk. And last but not least, our Twitter account is at Sega Junkyard. Um, so, yeah, that's been episode 20 of the Dream Pod. We hope you've enjoyed it. And, uh, yeah, thank you very much. We'll see you on the next one. Goodbye. Thank you. See you see later. Ya. Bye. Por favor, retire el disco. Please stop this disc now. Now, 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 now.